Hey guys, Mr. Bullock here. Uh, this is uh, three sections in uh, Algebra 2. We're going kind of fast uh, for a couple of reasons. This is an Algebra 1 review, and the second thing is, is I'm on a block schedule. We go twice the pace, so we've got to make up some time. So um, this is on relations, functions, uh, slope, rate of change, and graphing lines, all from Algebra 1. So here's some review definitions, and I'm going fast, so you have to pause it if I'm going too fast, if you need to write things down. A relation is just a set of ordered pairs. The x coordinates are called the inputs or the domain. The y coordinates are called the outputs or the range. A function is just a relation in which each input has exactly one output. In other words, there's no repeating x's. You can have repeating y's, you just can't have repeating x's. So, for example, can you see this set of ordered pairs right here? There's two sets this one and then this one's another set of ordered pairs. Okay, this set of ordered pairs is a function because I don't have any x's repeating. Negative 4, 2, negative 2, 5. So this one is a function. This one though, 1 it gives me this one and then 1 gives me this one. I can't have the same x giving me two different y's. So that one's the reason why that one's not a function. Now what I'm going to do is show a graph of this one on one page and then this one on the following page. Okay, so here's the, that top one right here. Can you see these guys? That's all these graphed. Here's negative 4, 1. Uh, here's 2, 1, and so on. The vertical line test, will, when they give you a graph, you can just kind of mentally see a vertical line. See how it intersects this graph right there in one spot, right there in one spot, one spot, one spot. If it intersects it in at most one spot, not, two, not more than one spot, but in one spot, then it is a function. Let's graph this set of order pairs on this slide right here. Okay, so when I graph those, as soon as I go across, right there, it intersects it in more than one spot. This fails the vertical line test because it intersected it, boom, boom, right there. So it is not a function because it failed the vertical line test. So here, identify the domain and range of this relation and uh, represent the relation by graphing. Well, we know how to do that in a mapping uh, diagram. I haven't shown you that, but that's really easy, you guys. Okay, the domain is all the x's, 3, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 0. The range is all the y's. So there's your domain and range. There's all those points graphed right there. Okay, can you just glance? Does it pass the vertical line test? It does to me, so that would be a function right there. Okay, what about, now there's the mapping thing right there. Okay, so this, uh, this 3 gives me 2. This negative 1 gets me 0. So here's 3. The input was 3. The output's 2. The input negative 1. The output 0, and so on right there. So this, this is a function right here. Okay, and this is the mapping. This is my mapping part right there. All right, this guy right here. Tell whether the relation is a function, then explain. Okay, so can you see that this input right here, 3 gives me negative 1 and 3 gives me negative 2? This is a relation. It's just not a function, you guys, because uh, 3 has uh, two outputs. 3 goes to negative 1 and negative 2 right there. All right, what about this one right here? Okay. Now, I have two numbers going to the uh, same output, but I don't have any inputs going to two different outputs. Okay, so as long as the inputs aren't re are not repeating, then it is a function, and this one is a function right there. Okay? Uh, Alright, so uh, use the vertical line test to state what's your function. Did you guys get a chance to look at that? There it is right there. Yes, it is a function uh, because it, uh, they all go to uh, each only has uh, they don't have any repeating inputs. Okay, so use the vertical line test right here, you guys. Okay, so here's the vertical line right there. Uh, and now just slide through. Okay, does it look like? Nah, it doesn't look like it intersects it in more than one spot. I think I think yeah, that one's a function right there. All right. Okay, what about this one right here? Okay, it's gonna slide this baby through. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only one spot. Yeah, that's a function also. Okay, what about this guy right there? Well, this one fails this vertical line right there, so this one is not a function because it hits it right there and right there. Okay, so that is not a function. All right, all right, so slope, remember, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If they give you a picture, then it's just rise over run. Parallel lines have equal slopes, perpendicular slopes have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. One's positive, one's negative, and they're reciprocals of each other. Okay, or if when you multiply them, they give you negative one. All right, so tell whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. You guys remember these symbols from uh, geometry. That's parallel, that's perpendicular, and here's the two lines right here. Okay, what I'm going to do is use slope formula for line one and line two, and I color-coded them into blue and red. So here's the slope of line one. When I cranked it out, I get negative three. 
Okay, now I'm going to crank out uh, line two right there. I get a positive one third. Can you see these are opposite reciprocals? Or if I multiply them, I get negative one perpendicular. Okay, if they're equal to each other, I'd say they're parallel. If they weren't opposite reciprocals or were not uh, equal, then it's neither. All right, so in 1965, a tree's diameter was 137 inches. In 2005, it grew to 141 inches. Find the average rate of change. That means code word for slope, you guys. And then use that to predict the diameter in 265, 2065. All right, so the average rate of change, I said, is code word for slope, okay? So um, what you're going to do is find the, the change in your diameter over the change in time. Okay, and so if I just did y sub 2, this would be my y sub 2, 141, minus 137 is 4, so this top number would be 4. And then from 2005 uh, down to 1965, that change in time is 40 years right there. So 4 inches over 40 years, when I divide 4 divided by 40, I get 0 0.1, 0 0.1 inch per year. So a pretty slow growing tree. All right, so to predict that in 2005, okay, remember these are years from 2000 because we're dealing with years from uh, 2005, you guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, uh, predict, um, I'm going to, in 2005, I'm going to take uh, that 60 years right there and just multiply it by the rate of change. Okay, so the average rate of change is 0.1 inch per year, so that's going to be in 60 years. 60 times 0.1 is a 6 inch growth. So 141 plus 6, because it's at 141 in 2005. So if it's going to grow in 60 years, 6 more inches, I'm going to add 6 inches to 141 right there. Okay? All right, so linear equations. You guys remember this from Algebra 1. Slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. This is the slope. This is the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, standard form, ax plus by equals c. Okay, your books, I'm sure, didn't give this stuff to you, but the slope, when it's written like this, is just opposite the number in front of y over the number in front of x. Your y-intercept is just this number over the number in front of y, and your x-intercept is c over a. All right, so, and then um, let's graph and label the intercepts. Okay, you guys remember from Algebra 1, we go down to this minus 2 right here. I'm going to put a point right there, and then I'm going to use the slope, up 3 to the right 4. So from here, I'm going to put a point up three to the right four. I'm going to put another point right there. All right, so there's that guy. There's that guy. Connect them up. Okay, and the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. Well, where it crosses the x-axis, that's when y is zero. So I added two to both sides, and I get two equals three, four, six. Whoops, there's supposed to be a little fraction bar right there. And then um, uh, multiply both sides by four right there. I get eight equals three x, so x equals eight thirds. And then that one's pretty easy. You can just see that one right there. It said label the intercepts. I'm labeling. Okay, this one's really easy, especially labeling the intercepts. What I do is uh, go ahead and let x or let y be zero. So here's y equals zero. Then that goes away. I'm left with negative two x equals six, and negative two goes into six negative three times. And then when y is 0, I cover up, uh, I'm sorry, when x is 0, I cover up that negative 2x. When I cover up the negative 2x, negative 3 goes into 6, negative 2 times. Here's my intercepts. x equals negative 3, y equals negative 2. Okay, and let's see, what else do I have for it? Okay, when I graph these guys, y equals negative 3 is a horizontal line, x equals 4 is a vertical line. Okay, and so these guys only have a, this one only has a y-intercept because it intercepts this y-axis. This guy over here only intersects the x-axis, so this is my x-intercept right there. All right, so I get a y-intercept of negative 3, and over here I get an x-intercept of negative 4. All right, and uh, for my classes, if you're in my class, that would be your homework assignment, okay? Good job. Thanks for your patience on this long video, you guys.